Hello, this is Gordon Fessick from AntiWindowsCatalog.com. This is part 5 of Safeguarding Your Windows 10 Pro PC. Part 5 will do an advanced software restriction policy where we deny executables by default. And then we have just two basic rules to allow executables in the Program Files folder and in the Windows folder, but nowhere else. I have personally used this on my own daily desktop PC without any difficulties. Any apps that I can't use it for, too bad. I just don't use those apps. Your mileage may vary, however, but nothing stops you from adding additional rules. Let's go back to our SRP that we set up earlier. Okay. We're going to get rid of these two default rules because some apps don't like them. Instead, we'll do an allow rule for these. Okay, program files. And because we're running 64-bit Windows, we have a 32-bit program files folder. We need to allow that one as well. And finally, the OS itself. And unrestricted. Okay. Now we can get rid of these, I think. Let's find out. Hmm? Okay, here's where things get interesting. Let's double check our enforcement. Yep, all software files, all users except local admins, ignore certificate rules, that's fine. File types we specified should still be here. Uh, LNK is not here, good, neither is URL. The ones we put in here earlier are still here. Where's Java? That's still here, JAR and JS. Okay, time to set the disallow rule by default. I think this takes immediate effect. Hmm. Let's try a program off of a USB stick, quickly. I don't have one. Well, I can make one quickly. I can make a fake one. Okay, yeah. The only reason why the maintenance admin experiences this is I have user account control enabled, and because I have UA UAC enabled, it treats the admin account like a non-admin account unless you run as administrator, which is just fine. In fact, we can verify that. Like, this won't run. I mean, obviously, it's an empty file, but I could right-click, run as admin. Really? That's interesting. Let's try another one. Let's, we have a download here, don't we? No? I know we have a program here somewhere. We can always steal notepad.exe from here and see. Okay. We know that's not going to work, but can we, can we run this run again? Really? Hello? <laughs> Let's take a look at the log, find out what's going on here.
Okay, <laughs> that I knew about. That I knew about. I need to try an installer. Okay, well, let's switch accounts. This is proving more interesting already. Can I still run programs? Okay, good. Internet Explorer launches. Edge launches. Um, come on, launch. Come on, launch. <laughs> good. <laughs> Minesweeper still launches. <laughs> That's encouraging. Accessories, 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 notepad. Okay, the notepad on the proper location runs. <laughs> okay, downloads. I already know that this isn't going to work. Let's try the right click on this admin. Okay. <laughs> That's the right behavior <laughs> that I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops. Okay, well, at least it is behaving the way I expected it to behave. <laughs> now, doing a disable by default SRP actually takes care of a lot of things. It not only takes care of drive-by downloads, it takes care of auto-run off of, off of these devices. I mean, people can't run these, right? So an auto run on a USB stick won't work. An auto run on a CD won't work. If you really wanted to run something off the CD, you'd have to right click on it and pick run as administrator, which is good. You don't want strange things running unless you install them. Windows Store apps, like we saw Minesweeper work a moment ago, that still works. Again, that's because the Windows Store apps don't actually install in the user's profile, they install here. And there's actually a little section for each user, but uh, there's a, a grand section for all. I did some poking about. It turns out that there is a per user section, but there's a common section for all users so that if I install Minesweeper, but then my little test child account goes and installs Minesweeper, it's not having to install it twice. It also avoids the problem with SRP. I can have a disable by default rule and it still works. Let's check Creator, which uh, you'd think would give us trouble, but um, it hasn't before. I don't expect it to give me any trouble again. Open existing project. Now I know I've got my pro yeah, there's the thing that I did before, okay. Preview. Okay, burn. Gotta make it fit somehow. Okay, and here's a question I have for Adobe Systems while I am generating this DVD. Why can't Encore do it as a non admin? Never mind with SRP enabled. Why can a $100 little application from a little outfit up in Ottawa, Ontario do what the mighty Adobe Systems? flagship product Encore for making DVDs cannot do on a modern Windows PC. Hmm. I hope they get around to fixing that. If they have, let me know in the comments, please, because I've been wanting to reevaluate that. But at least in CS6, it doesn't work. Okay. Save project and get out of here. I have successfully run Microsoft Office 2007, Microsoft Office 2010. I haven't tried 2013 yet, but I know those two sets of uh, Office suites work with the full SRP enabled. Um, 
Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, boy. I want to put chrome on here, just to see what happens. <laughs> no, don't don't do that. Nope. <laughs> okay, I got a question for Google, by the way. Where's my download? Say, I really do want to install Chrome. Where's, where's the Chrome installer? Let's get back there. Let's get back there. There, at least IE11 still lets me pick save as. I would not be so chuffed at Chrome if I could just treat it like a regular Windows desktop app. But watch this. I can install it. I can run it as an admin. <laughs> this should be interesting. I got bad news for you, though. <laughs> it's not running as me. Or is it? Oh, yeah, look at that. And there's like 50 chromes there. All right, let's find out where it is. Properties. See, pro hey, look at that, Google. Thank you, Google, for making Chrome behave. <laughs> well, that's a load off my mind. So if someone really wants to put this on there with a full SRP and so forth, it can be treated like a proper uh, Windows app. Good. <laughs> I was a little worried there. Firefox also behaves, by the way. I didn't test it here, but I've tested it on other systems before with SRP enabled. Okay, no problem. <laughs> if, uh... <laughs> oh boy. I've got a love-hate relationship with this particular browser. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see what else we could do. Hmm. What's a good example? How can I make a drive by download happen? Just to test this. <laughs> Come on. That doesn't help me any. And it hides the addresses. <laughs> Come on, give me some good examples. Let it be. Ah, I wish I could find an example. If you have an example of a site that tries to install something behind your back, um, leave it in the comments. I'll try to test it. The trouble is, I would find an example and then it would disappear because either the webmasters caught it and removed it, or by the time I get to test it out, uh, Security Essentials or rather Windows Defender has already caught it, or something. I just can't seem to find an example that sticks around long enough for me to beat it up. <laughs> oh, go away. Thank you. Uh, okay, so you have a good, exa uh, good example of a, of a drive-by application? Uh, leave it in the comments. Perhaps... No, I can't do it in Edge. It doesn't do plugins. Perhaps an Internet Explorer. Is it 
gonna no, it's gonna ask for a proper installation first. Okay, what's a better one? <laughs> oh boy. Please leave me some examples. <laughs> Even if it's a simple example that does a pop-up that says hi there or something. <laughs> as long as it's something that tries to run just by visiting it, uh, let me know. I would really like to try it out in this environment. Or try it out yourself. Set up your PC the same way I did here and see if it uh, behaves the way I expect it, which is it would block it. <laughs> well, I guess that's the end. Oh, one more thing. Let's try our child account. Oh, look, because it's a proper Windows app. Chrome actually got installed for all users. I'm curious about something. Oh, come on. Oh, looks like uh, Family Safety catches it in other browsers. Good to know. Ah, boy, Google, Google. <laughs> Okay, those still work. Let's just give it a refresh. Looks fine. Store. I said the store. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Don't scare me like that. Uh, okay, let's install something. E for everyone. Oh, well, that's good. Of course, it has DLC and in-app purchases and so forth. Keys. No, no jump button, <laughs> of course. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> it works. That's all that matters. <laughs> all right, I'm going to sign out here. Oh, wait a minute. Let's check one more thing. Do I still have my USB stick attached? Yeah, I already demonstrated that. Right, we already know this doesn't work. Okay. Um, well, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> if you've got ideas, I'd love to hear from you. Go ahead and post them in the comments, like I said. In the meantime, I will sign out. This is the end of the safeguarding series for now. Uh, some bonus episodes will include how I put this production together. If so, there are some good bloopers, I'll put them in here. Maybe some additional examples. Otherwise, we'll catch you guys next time. If there's a part six, we'll see you then.